What's up everybody? So my name is Russ. Uh, RWGResearch.com is my website. You're probably watching this video from there. And uh, today we've got some really interesting things going on. I'm actually going to interview a guy. Uh, his name is Russ Grease. Um, I know him pretty well. And um, I got some stuff here I really want to talk to him about. So let's go ahead and see if we can get him in here, shall we? Yo, yeah, yeah, hold on, hold on. I'm busy. Hurry up. Whoa, whoa, what? I'm trying to work on some projects here. What's going on? Uh, Come I'm on, to sit man. down. Yes, sit down, please. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Are you ready? I guess. Let's go for it. All right. So here first question. So, um, who are you? And just tell me a little bit about yourself, if you mind. Uh, my that. name is uh, Russ Grease, and uh, I am uh, basically just a normal dude trying to do something good for this world. I. Uh, consider myself just a normal person nothing special but uh, you know I work at uh, work at a roofing plant I am a maintenance technician uh, controls tech kind of guy work on PLC's programming electrical that kind of stuff this is a squeaky chair what is up with this thing oh my God. Oh, no. Man, couldn't you couldn't you afford better chairs for this interview dude it's all I got I guess okay. not. anyway so yeah, I mean that's uh, that's basically me. I just uh, consider myself a uh, reporter researcher, and um, kind of just right. try to uh, make this world a better place. You know, there's a lot of stuff in this world that just doesn't seem right, and I agree. Um, I'm here to kind of try to make um, sense of it all. Try to bring the truth out. What's real? What's not? What are we? What kind of technologies are being held against us? What kind of things are right in front of our faces that we just don't look at? those kind of things that's kind of what I'm uh, kind of me and kind of uh, I guess what I'm trying to do all right cool uh, you're looking a little scruffy right now I mean you look like a freaking caveman have you uh what, oh you man shave your are you face? kidding me no I mean really do I look like a mountain man really yeah you I really forgot to do. shave I did I forgot to shave my face uh, well, let me go shave know? my face hold on oh man come on didn't you know there's an interview this guy <sighs> I guess I probably should have told him that we have an interview and maybe he would have been a little bit more prepared, but you know, you get what you get. Ba 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 ba. And you got a tight Dude. work area down here. Yeah, I, I know. I do. I know. <laughs> it's a little small. Okay. Well, welcome back. I'm back. Good. I'm glad <sighs> you're here. Thanks for reminding me. I just, I totally, I, sometimes I just, I think I work just so hard on these projects that I just oh. lose track of time. So, okay. I guess that's what happened. I guess. I don't know what you did. So what is it that you're doing and what do you expect to accomplish? Well, it's a good question. Um, basically, I, I consider myself a reporter researcher and there are so many things out there. All of these different things that you see in the background are just items that I have built and tested and learned about how they function and what's really going on with with if something is real or not. Basically there's a lot of energy problems out there. Energy crisis and uh, we got to figure out a good way to produce our energy. Now um, a lot of these devices you see behind me are things that I've either built, borrowed, or someone else has built and let me borrow. Um, and over time um, I've accomplished a lot, I've learned a lot, and these, these devices have taught me a lot about what is real, what is not real, and uh, basically the, the energy crisis we have is we've got to figure out a better way to make energy. And uh, I, I find myself um, building these things and testing these things because there's just a lot of gossip out there of, hey, there's this energy device that makes all this energy and some extra left over. It's like, okay, well, let's test it. Let's not talk about it. Let's do it. If if I can't do it myself and I can't put it together, um, then basically, um, I, I don't know if it's real. And so what I do is I build I it, I test it, I report on it, I do my best job to publish all the information I possibly can, and basically that's kind of what I do, I guess. Okay. Well, why are you interested in energy research? Um, energy research. Um, that's a good question, mainly because we have a problem right now. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of control. Money is all about control. That's yes. all money is. We all agree that money is worth this, and therefore it is. Guaranteed that that is not 
you know, truth behind that. There's, there's so much more behind what money really is. And energy is part of how money comes into play with this whole scenario. Um, you know, for instance, you've got, uh, you've got all this oil out there and you've got all this stuff going on and yet for some reason all these guys in their backyard like myself in their garage and basement lab are building these devices that are so much more efficient why aren't we using those money greed those type of things self-righteous that type of stuff that stuff's got to go so you know i i focus on energy research to try to better this world i i think there's a better place in this world for us um, we can all benefit if we just work together, share, and a good place to start is energy research. Now, of course, you're going to have to bring that technology in through the people, which is where I sit. Everything I right, do right. is open source and in the public eye, and everybody has up-to-date information on exactly what I'm doing as I do it. So energy okay. research is important to be self-sustaining, basically. All right, very cool. So what have you done so far? Um, good question. A lot of this stuff back here. Um, so basically, you've got all sorts of different stuff. I've got, I don't have any of my rodent coils out here, but I've got rodent coils. I've got HHO devices. I've got magnetic devices. I've got pulse motors. I've got just all sorts of things that I've built and tried to test. Um, Stan Mayer's research, um, you know, that's an interesting thing. Is it real? I, I really don't know. I'm still working on it. That's where I started, and uh, that is still kind of a progressive thing. Um, right now I'm working on um, what they call PAP technology, a noble gas engine, an engine that it. runs on noble gases. Um, I've gotten quite a bit of interest with that and a lot of good feedback and help, so that's always a good thing. Um, part of the Stanley Mayer stuff right here is actually an ejector, okay? And I actually 3D printed this part right here on this 3D wow, printer. Um, really? And a lot of these parts were donated by individuals to uh, get me that far. And this is supposed to be a ceramic insert for this injector. Injector, excuse me. And um, <laughs> I, I don't have the correct necessarily tools to make a ceramic part. But now that I've made a, basically I can make a mold of this and turning into a real ceramic part. So I've done a lot, you know, a lot of different uh, different stuff and it's all basically one step at a time, one day at a time, um, see what's real and uh, yeah, as you can see, a lot of different stuff going on that I've done and this is just barely touching any of, you know, a lot of the stuff that I've actually built, constructed, uh, constructed and tested. <coughs> Hasn't this been done before, and are you the only one doing this type of thing? Um, no, I'm not the only one doing this. It has been done before. A lot of people out there, um, a lot of this technology has been suppressed. That's just it. Like, um, supposedly Howard Johnson, the Johnson motor. Um, you know, that, that was a big ordeal. It was a big public ordeal, and it just kind of went downhill. And whether or not his device worked, I don't know. But I can tell you that it got suppressed big time. So maybe it did work. Maybe it got validated and it shot down so that nobody else could replicate it. Hmm. I don't really know. But yeah, a lot of other people are doing this. So I'm not the only guy out there, but um, you know, I'm dedicating a lot of my time, my free time, just this is all done and just voluntary. Wow. And it's a lot of work, but I really think that we can make a positive um, change in this world, but it's got to be done working together. Okay. So we've got to work together on this. That's all there is to it. All right. Uh, what has been your greatest challenge? That's a good question. Um, my, my greatest challenge probably has been the balance between family, church, general church life, guy. my job, and my research. Okay. Um, it's very difficult to get as much as I do accomplished in the amount of time that I get it accomplished and it's been a very big challenge to balance those loads out. I am uh, currently at this day I am uh, really close to having my third child and that's pretty darn amazing and wow. I'm totally psyched about that. Um, that's awesome. But at the same Congrats. time I've got to balance it out. So the way to balance it out is to help and be helped. Share all your information. People will help you 
and together we can work on it. If you spread the load through all the people, there's so many individuals out there that have such good skills. Okay, we all have our own skills. God gave us our own skills. Right, I agree. One person has electronic skills. One, excuse me, person has, um, you know, engineering skills. One guy's got um, machining skills. You know, these three come together, they can build anything. Um, and that's that's kind of the way I, I see it. As as you've got to come together and you've got to you've got to work on this stuff as a group. All right. Well, uh, how can someone like me help then? Um, that's a good question. So, an individual such as yourself, um, I have a website. It's rwgresearch.com, which is displayed up here. Um, and on my website, there is a link to a forum. The forum um, right now isn't the bestly organized, and it's kind of hard to follow through. Planning on doing some rework on that. Um, but currently, if you go over there, you can find a spot. You might be able to say, hey, this guy's working on a project. Looks like I can help him out. I got a little bit of electronic skills. Boom. Do it. Um, the other thing you can do is you can send me an email and give me some of your skill sets. Sometimes it works out great, sometimes it doesn't work out at all. But, you know, I'm encouraging you to, to do that. Um, because if you, if you don't do that, then you just, you're just a guy behind the screen watching the work being done. And that's not, that's not a good thing. You, even if you think you don't have the right skill set to do something, um, you may say, hey, I, I, can't, I have no idea about electronics don't have any clue about building stuff but okay. um, but hey I, I can uh, you know I can work on a website hey perfect I'll give you the information you need why don't you keep the ups uh, the, the website up to date so I see people who think they they may not have a fit and may not be able to help actually probably can you just need to uh, you can go to my website rwgresearch.com uh, the forums is open hyphen uh, source hyphen energy dot com okay. uh, or dot org. I think it's dot org. Um, just check the website, uh, rwresearch.com. It's Figured been a long time. A lot uh, okay. going on. But basically, um, you know, get involved. That's what you can do. One way or another, get involved. Um, okay. You know, there is a donation link on my website. You know, that's merely only there for people who can actually do that. But, and I don't want anybody donating that's using like their life savings or something. Absolutely not. Right, it's there for right. people who have some extra pocket change that are willing to pitch in and help this world be a better place. So, you know, okay. use your brain and use your resources of whatever kind you've got, whether it's, hey, I work in a machine shop, they let me use machines for free, boom. See what we can come up with. See if there's something that you can apply yourself to and help out um, in the long run. So that's how I feel about that. Very cool. So how can this research help others? Is that possible? Um, I feel that uh, by doing by doing what I do, this this research that I do, I, I find it very. Um, I think it will be helpful in a way. Is if if I'm just one guy working on this project, and I share bits bits of information, then a guy that may not have the tools and necessary things to actually build and test this device, they can get on there and actually check out the website or my videos and say, hey, I I think I know what's going on here. I think I can help you out. Um, and so by me sharing everything, it helps other people understand the processes that we're not told or, or information that we don't know about. Um, okay. So I, I think it, it definitely is, is a big help for everybody else because I'm sharing everything open and free all the time. You don't right. have to come to my website and pay for something to get it. You just come and it's there. All the that's, documents, information, it's all right awesome. there, ready to go. Very cool. So are you a leader in this research then? Um, you know, it's kind of interesting. Um, I don't think that I'm a leader. I don't want to be a leader, um, but I find myself being part of, you know, the lead person that actually keeps this stuff going on particular research that I'm working on. Other people are doing stuff. They're kind of their own leaders, if you will. Like, they press on. But my, my ultimate goal is to, no, I don't want to be a leader. I want to be a part of a, a giant network and group of people that can actually come together and work on this kind of stuff and that's what I see myself. I see myself as just a catalyst in this process okay. and just showing that I can you know be a part of this and then if someone wants to take the torch and run with it do it. I mean that's what it's all about. Um, granted credit is always given where credit is due and I would respect the same back. So if you see something I come up with some phenomenon like the hydrogen in the PAP um, replication that was kind of something new 
I would I would hope that a person that would carry the torch on would reference where they got the information from. That's really all that I ask for. But no, I don't find myself being a leader per se, but at the same time, you know, when I stop doing something for several months, everything kind of slows down. So yes and no, but my goal isn't to be a leader. My goal is to get people together and, you know, work on this as a group. There's definitely some need for people. This is where you can help again. Definitely some need for people to organize, okay. help get a plan better together and, and stuff like that. So definitely more work there needs to be done. Very cool. So do you believe in free energy? Um, okay. That's an interesting question. <laughs> yes, okay. it is. Free energy. All right. I don't particularly like that term. Yes, it's, it's energy that you're not paying for, therefore it's technically free. But when somebody hears free energy, that's not, that's not, that's not right. Um, what it is, is I, I truly think that there isn't a so-called free energy. I think what happens is there is manipulation of energy around us. Energy is never destroyed or created, it just constantly changes. For instance, the sun puts off this, you know, radiation of all sorts of types. Um, and one of them is photon energy, uh, photon radiation. And you can, you can put a solar panel in front of those sun rays and pull off energy from that solar panel. Okay. Um, so you didn't pay for anything. Theoretically, you bought the solar panel, but, you know, you're not paying for anything. So it's free. But I, I don't like the term free energy. But, you know, as these photons come and they hit this, okay, here's a, how I visualize it. If you've got energy, photon energy traveling, okay, you interrupt the, the tr path of these, of these photons and you, you know, put that to good use through, let's say, a couple of LED lights uh, or charge a battery. Right, but right, you've just right. converted the energy from one thing to the other and then using it again. And usually it always converts back. It's a cycle. Same thing with wind. You put a windmill up here, the wind blows through. You're not doing anything except you're just interrupting the path of the wind flow and you're producing energy out of this out of this wind generator. So yeah, I, I, I don't like that the term sense. free energy, but um, okay. you know I think that uh, I think that energy can be you know freely um, generated generated through these processes of interrupting the energy flow around us. That's what I truly think is is kind of going on around that. All right. Well, what does open source mean to you and why is full open source important? It's a good question. Um, so open source, um, full blown open source. Okay. It's important to me because if we don't share information, we're not going to get anywhere. Since the internet has come about, you can find all sorts of information. You can shoot an email across the world in a split second. It used to take months to get a piece of a mail across, <clears throat> you know, the, the Atlantic Ocean or whatever. <coughs> Excuse me. So basically, um, since, since all this information can be shared freely, doing this in an open source manner is extremely important. Um, if you share, I'll give you an example. So I do everything open source. And what this kind of means is that I share everything <coughs> freely. You don't have to buy anything from me, et cetera, et cetera. So you come to my website, you see I'm working on a project, okay? You see, oh, this guy's published all the data that I need, you know, awesome. But hey, I, I don't have, uh, I don't have the, te the technical know-how to actually like pursue this, but I, I like it a lot. <clears throat> so what that individual can do is gather up all the data and say, okay, this guy could use, let's just say, you know, a, a piece of equipment that would help his, his research. So this guy says, hey, you know, I've got a, a manufacturer that I know kind of part owner of this place. I'll just go ahead and buy this piece of equipment. You can do your testing on it. You know, after, after you're done testing, either, you know, you can keep it or not, you know, but by being open source, by giving everything away constantly as it happens, you're never going to lose the information. <clears throat> Luckily, I built a pretty good network of people. You can sign up on my website. There's a place if you go to subscribe to our mailing list, something okay. dramatic happens. I'll send everybody an email to have the information. They can drag it right off my server or I'll post it on multiple servers. They grab that information. They post it on their own servers. Hundreds of people grab those and post it on their own servers. Right. And this stuff spreads like wildfire. Right, Boom, exactly. like that. So exactly. <clears throat> open source is important because if I'm doing everything by myself in my basement lab, 
like some of these people <laughs> are doing. You know, they're spending oodles and oodles of time and right. nobody else is learning anything. And then when they quit on the project or pass away for whatever reason, all the information is lost. Exactly. So I find it very important that doing full-blown open source is the only way to make a change in this world. It's the only way it's going to happen. Um, you've got to get rid of your greed and your self-righteous. You've got to look at other people. That's what this world is about. God designed this world to be open, free, and sharing. Until we get to that point, I don't think we're ever going to see the, the energy um, crisis you know, resolved because exactly. you've got to, everyone's got to be open. And right. um, unfortunately, there's a lot of controlling things that are put in place by the um, the governments and such that, you know, even individuals, some people, that. if they figure something out, they'll hide it to themselves thinking they're going to make a buck on it. Never comes true. And they, they, they end up, the information gets lost. So open sourcing is a way to get around <clears throat> that kind of thing. That makes sense. So what do you plan to do if a technology is rediscovered that can change the world? Um, so if something comes about um, that is just... This is it. I have the answer. This is this is the answer to the whole thing. I think um, what I will do is send out a mass email, post it on every website I can possibly get to, and let it run like wildfire. That's the only way to do it. Because if I hang on to that secret, and something would happen to me, well, then it wasn't. It, it was useless. It was boring. Right. Nobody exactly. gained anything. Exactly. Yeah. I can see that. So that's that's you have to do that. You okay. have to give it freely, open, and um, and if you find something that you come across that's just world-changing, you've got to get it out there. Um, another guy by the name of Zero Fossil Fuel is one of the other individuals that have really come to what I am the same level of what I'm trying to do, and just full-blown open source. There are other people out there, but this is another guy that does projects like me. He just tries to see it and he shares his results, and hopefully one day we'll get there. Um, okay, very cool. So. That's you, cool. you can look that guy up if you just Google Zero, Zero Fossil, fossil fuel. fuel. He's everywhere. All right. And he has the exact same mindset. He's an older gentleman compared to, to my age. And, um, you know, that's the way I, I, he encourages me, uh, encourages me to keep going because I see, you know, he's got that mindset. And that's what everyone has to have. There are a lot of other individuals out there that aren't in the public eye that are the same mindset. I, I've just met so many people over the last several years and um, it's been just amazing if you throw yourself out there there's like this global consciousness of some sort and if you throw yourself out there this is how you think this is what's going on that is what will happen and you will receive people will come to you and if you throw yourself out there people with that same mindset will come to you it's actually been an amazing experience so um, hopefully the uh, the positive attitude continues very cool so are you worried about others stopping you, like the men in black Suburbans and stuff um, like that? You know, no. And and the reason for that is, is because I don't have any secrets. Okay? okay. I don't have anything that I am not sharing. That makes so sense. So everything that I know, everything I've done is already published on the internet. It's already given to someone else's hands, which have been shared with someone else's hands. So I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to, to worry about. I mean, that's kind of the way very I cool. feel about that. I just, I don't that's see that cool. I have anything to worry about because I don't have any I don't have any information hidden these people that, that work in their basement and come out with something and then try to sell it <laughs> yeah done That's yeah it. I can see that um, and and you, can you can't that. do that you you can't sell this technology you have to give it away right um, I know you need money for research I know that you know people need to be funded to get to that point exactly but you've got to you know you've got to remember that you can't sell the secret Make kits and sell them of other things. So fund, write a book, fund your research that way, whatever. Um, you, you can do it a lot of different ways. There's a lot of really interesting um, ways to um, do donations through individuals and raise a certain amount for a certain project. You could try that, but uh, you've got to give this stuff away. It's the only way it's going to evolve in this world as it stands now yeah that that makes sense so what motivates you to keep going and do you motivate other people um yeah i mean i'll be honest every time i post a video i get quite a few views on it and i get quite a few positive comments there's always a couple people trolling out there that's fine 
But of for the most part, happen. people really encourage me to keep going. And I know I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from people about encouraging them. Even if it's just getting off their butt, grabbing a hand tool, and doing something. Exactly. That right there alone ha makes me smile. I mean, I feel good about myself when somebody sends me just a very short little, Hey Russ, thanks for posting a video. You know, it, it encouraged me today. My son actually watched it. And, you know, we now are just a little bit more excited about doing something on our own and learning more about this type of, of thing. And so that, you know, encouraging others and being encouraged, I mean, that's what it's about is, is help and be helped, learn and be learned, love and be loved. That's exactly. what it's about. It, this is a global thing. We all need to work together to make, um, you know, to make each other encouraged and keep ourselves going. It's the only way. Okay. So what the other people actually um, think about all this crazy stuff that you're doing um so a lot of other people um they they really they really enjoy it now there's a few out there that like to troll and eh, you know that's what they do that's fine yeah. but a lot of the other people who are really interested in, in this type of thing is really you know they really do um they really do enjoy it and uh, they are very glad that i do this and they're very supportive of it um, so that's always a good thing, yeah. Well, that's good. So what do you see in your lifetime that will let you know you have achieved your goal? Um, that's a pretty interesting question. Um, I don't think, um, I don't think I'm ever going to, you know, see something that says, ah, oh, that's it. Because my goal overall is to just learn, help people, and it's all about the experience, okay? If you open yep. up a book and says, you know... <laughs> something something in this story and then you go turn the next page and it says the end nobody's gonna buy that book but if there's a story if there's a start and an end and everything in between people are really going to enjoy that story and that's where I kind of fit in you know I, I share videos of my daily life on my YouTube I post it all on the same channel I don't have a technical channel and a, and a family channel and a you know a rust channel no no I, I did put it all on there because if you want to know who I am, you know want to know what I'm doing. You want to know what is Russ all about. Boom. One place to go and you've got it. Um, so, you know, I guess that's how I kind of feel about that. That makes sense. So, what do you do for fun? I mean, what all is right, it? All right, so for fun. All right, you see this pulse motor back here. There's one over there. Um, there's some stuff behind the camera that you can't see. And... For fun, as far as project-wise, um, me and a gentleman that goes by the name of Tin Man, um, he has a, his own form. It's I think it's iaec.formco.com, I believe. You can find the links on my website under the links page. But uh, him and I started this thing a while back, um, and we were just kind of kidding around. We're like, hey, let's have a pulse motor build off. Well, what is that? Well, I looked it up on the Internet. There was no such thing as a pulse motor. <laughs> it wasn't even in Wiki. Nice. And I'm nice. like, really? Okay, so I guess we can do That's whatever funny. we want. So we, okay. we had a little friendly competition, and we invited whoever watched the videos, whoever got to see the videos or sent the email on the email list. Um, everybody just pitched in and built a pulse motor. I gave everybody, uh, me and Tim, I gave everybody two weeks build it from scratch you have to use your resources it was probably the best thing motivated so many individuals to just find what they have laying around their house old hard drives make great rotors for pulse motor projects you know can you can that. find old magnet wire in old TVs like oh, you've really? got to look around there is resources around you you've just got to get them um, okay. for instance I built a electric motorcycle from scratch if you google voltzilla v-o-l-t-z-i-l-l-a it's everywhere. One word, Voltzilla. Oh, um, interesting. I'll and, have to look that you up. Know, that was just a project way before I was even, you know, really posting YouTube videos and really anybody really knew who I was. <laughs> I decided, hey, I want to use my resources. How, how much, how, how I want to know, using my resources, what can I build for an electric motorcycle? Can I accomplish that? And I actually came out $30 ahead. I actually got paid really? $30 by the time I scrapped the wow, truck that's awesome. and bought the parts that I needed to actually get that device working, that a, okay. a working electric motorcycle. That's awesome. Uh, batteries included and everything. Really? So you've got to look around you. Wow. There are resources around you. And you've got to look around you and use your resources. And so these pulse motor things that we do for fun, um, 
you know, is is very encouraging for people. We get people involved this way. We do give away prizes. There's a few people that have sponsored us in the past, always looking for more sponsors. If somebody wants to throw, you know, a, a small handheld oscilloscope, you know, they're like 80 bucks or something. If somebody wants to throw one of them in for a, a prize donation, fantastic, you know. Um, we usually do that once a year, but sometimes we do it a little differently. We don't always do it once or once a year. We might do it twice a year. So okay. always look forward to that. Subscribe to my email list, and that's when you'll get notified. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's RWG42985 is my YouTube if you look it up. All that you can okay. find on my website, though. All right. So what is the mo in most important lesson that you've learned from all your research? That is a good question. Um, so when I started my research, uh, I was just, I still am kind of nobody. I, I think of myself as nobody. I'm just a human being doing something, trying to make this place, this world we live in a little bit better. Sure. I so, can see that. So, you know, I, I've learned a lot. Um, I'm going to give you a few things that I've learned that is extremely important. All right. Um, basically, don't be greedy. Okay? Don't be greedy. People don't like greed. All right? End of story. You're not going to make a buck on a energy device that's like what we're doing. Sorry, it's just not going to happen. You just need to work with people and share information and try to work as a group and um, sneak the technology in under the table. That's the only way th that's going to happen. Okay. And so you've got to be... Makes sense. You know, you've got to figure out um, a way to do that. And some of the lessons that I have learned are, are very interesting. I have learned that um, you can't be greedy. There's no such thing as self-righteousness. That's not the way it's supposed to be. You don't. It's not all about you. I'm sorry. Um, it's about everyone else around you. Okay. You'd be amazed at what happens when you help somebody. I can in see the, that. In the most interesting way, you are helped in a in a way you've never you never thought. I've seen that before. So you I know, agree with and that. and also you know, if if you're if you're going to do this type of stuff, just be open-minded. You've got to be open-minded. Yes, you have to sit back and say, okay, I'm sorry, but that is just not real. You know. Right. But Try it yourself. If you cannot do it yourself, then maybe it's not real or you didn't get it right. Personally, sure. I will never tell somebody that it's totally fake unless I know for sure it's fake. And that's sometimes very easy to figure out. Sometimes it's very complex and you can't figure it out. And even if I build it myself and I can't get it to work, I'm not going to tell you it doesn't. I'm just going to tell you what I did, show you my results. So. It's very important just to show everything, failures and successes. Publish all the data out there and let people decide for themselves. All right. So what does your family think of all this research? Good question. Um, you know, there. my wife is, um, is supportive some days and not other days because I do. I do spend a lot of time on this. It's all voluntary. So, you know... I know my, my kids, they, they're not quite old enough yet to really enjoy some of this project stuff, but they're going to have a blast. When we get a little bit older, I can see they're going to have the best science projects. Absolutely. I don't care, okay? No, they're they're going to have the best science projects. End yep. of story. Yep. And they're going to enjoy the heck out of it. <laughs> um, but, but right now, they're a little young, and you know my wife needs a, a lot of, uh, of help with the kids. She's a, a stay-home mom right now. Um, that could change, but right now she is, and, and it's hard to balance because I work a lot of extra hours to make up for for her, and uh, and I'm okay with that. But you know, there's a balance there, and it's been pretty sure. difficult. Sometimes we're better, sometimes we're worse. But overall, um, you know, w w when I, when my wife sees the encouragement emails I get, she gets real excited, and 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 she understands that that's you know that's why I do this is because I, can see that. I encourage and people encourage and you know I, I honestly think that that God has put me in this position to share you know his beliefs and and show people that uh, um, you know and, and Jesus is my God Jesus Christ is my God and I, I think uh, that he's put maybe. me in this place amen. and he is you know supporting me in this and balancing helping me balance the load between family and uh, I do volunteer at, at my church, I run the lights. We okay. have a pretty complex lighting system at our church. Oh, and really? uh, It takes quite a bit of time to program lights for each service. And I really enjoy that. And, you know, that's what it's about. That's what it's all about. So, um, yeah, I guess that's the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough. Uh, so what's a long-term goal that you have? A long-term goal? <laughs> Good question. 
So ultimately, I would love to be able to be off the grid, like we all would, okay? But ultimately, you know, if I, if I encourage one person, you know, I can have a smile on my face. Because these people just don't have a clue and they just sit back and watch. But when they see somebody like myself that's just a guy doing his thing, says, hey, maybe I can, maybe I can do something. I'll try it, you know, and I, I encourage them to do that. And so, you know, ultimately my goal is, of course, to be able to give the world a, an energy device that we could all use. That's sure. kind of the ultimate goal. Right. But even just the everyday encouragement is just really a good thing. And, um, and you know, that, that is a long-term goal, is to keep the encouragement um, and make, make people get involved in their own way, however they can do that. So ultimately, what do you need to actually make some real progress in this research that you're doing? That's a good question. Um, so, ultimately, I would love to be able to work on this full time. Now, whoever's going to be paying my salary, all they're going to be getting back is recorded data and information from things I built. Okay, and uh, and that's all there is to it. Like there, there is no real money to be to be gained here. And, and granted, there is if you implement it correctly. But it's not about money. It's about finding a way to, to feed this world the energy we need because unfortunately our world evolves around energy so if we can find a way to create efficient energy um, and you can still open source stuff and sell stuff and make money off of it to fund the research so ultimately my goal would be able to somebody to step forward and give me time and okay. I will figure out Makes a way sense. to work out the money situation with um, supplies and stuff individuals have donated things in the past and it's been just an amazing experience for people to do that i just am so blessed by people um that i mean i i just i'm i am very heartfelt for people that really you know are are trying to to help me in whichever way they can there's a few individuals who have donated quite a bit of different things and i just I cannot thank them enough because I wouldn't be this far in this research without these individuals. So right, exactly. um, ultimately, I would love to be able to do this full time. That is kind of my, I guess that would be my long term goals to be able to do that. Um, <laughs> but, you know, at the that same time, nice. I'm okay with where I'm at, but that is yeah. definitely an ultimate goal. Well, very cool. Hey, come on, guys. Are you oh, done yet? Calm we got down, stuff to do. Come on, Chill now. Out. Like, come on, we got stuff to do. Gee whiz, what, okay. what is up with this guy? I, I don't know. Sorry. <sighs> Man. Anyway, um, all right, well, I guess that's all we got. Um, I really appreciate you letting me take the time to, uh, to interview pleasure. you. And um, I hope that uh, the people that get to watch this learn something. And uh, is there anything um, else you'd yeah, like to share? Um, so my website is rwgresearch.com, and there you can find everything you need to know. Um, there, there is a lot of stuff that I do that isn't on my website because I can't update things daily. I don't have that kind of time. That's where the uh, the people who want to come help can do so. You know, hey, I okay. posted a video today. Can you go throw it on the particular spot it needs to be? That would be amazing. Yeah, I can so see the little that. bitty things that people think, you know, I may not be able to help, you, you'd be surprised. Um, so, you know, go there, go to my website, check it out. Go to other people's website and check it out. Make sure, you know, you do your homework on people before you donate money to them. And Yep. Before you say, yeah, that's real. They've got it. It's it. Yeah. Do your homework, but do make up your own mind. and Don't let anybody tell you um, what an individual is without doing your own research or what a, what, an, sure. what a particular device does or is without talking to that person personally. Okay. That's what I tell people to do. If they want to know anything about me, they can contact me via email. Sometimes it's difficult. I do not get to all my emails. I read every one of my emails, but I don't always get to all the emails I can um, see that. as far as responding. But I do read them all, okay. and I, I do you know, feel bad know. about not getting back, but at the same time, I, just, I literally just don't have enough time. So I keep that, that in mind if you do try to contact me. But if you have a, just a straightforward question and you want to figure out if I'm a real deal or not, go check out my research, check out my website, and shoot me an email and see maybe I'll give you a call. Um, if I get the chance, I definitely will, but I do have to balance the load. It's pretty difficult Contacts at on times. the website, so, right? So yeah. you'll be able to do that. I guess that's uh, okay. 
Guess that's it. All right, come on, guys. Let's oh, go. We got stuff come to do. All right. Did you leave us things alone? To do. Come on. Jeez. Let's go. I guess. I guess that's it. I guess we're done. Are you done? That's it. <sighs> this guy has really just got too much going on. Um, so I guess that's it. Uh, this has been Russ, RWG Research, and I, I guess I gotta go. So I'll see you guys later. Have a good day. Peace out. Whoa.